podcasting live from Northeast Texas, the home of the Cowboys, Cowgirls, Texas country music, and beautiful Texas sunsets. This is the American Wing Girls podcast, a weekly podcast about the modeling and promotional industries. And now here's your host, friend, and business branding expert, Paul Robertson. Welcome back, everybody. Um, this is our next installment of the podcast. Uh, today on the call, I have Margaret Kobeck of Vantage Advertising on the call, and she specializes in trade shows, and they also do other promotions, but I, I really uh, am glad to have her on the call because she has a lot of great information for us about trade shows and about how you, the promotional model, fits into that to that scenario and how it all works. So um, welcome, Margaret. How are you doing today? Great, Paul. How about yourself? I am doing really good today. I, I'm good mood. Uh, just so everybody know, me and Margaret already have done an interview before, and our software messed, that, messed up, and we didn't get to record the call. So now we're doing it again. Um, so, uh, if you hear us, uh, mention, you know, talking about something again, that's what's going on. So, uh, all right, Margaret, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like where you're from, where you went to school, what you, uh, went to school for and how you ended up with Vantage? Sure. Um, so I'm originally from Rochester, New York, which is about an hour outside of Toronto, Canada. Um, and originally I went to school for marketing and English. And what I do here at Vantage is I deal directly with the promotional models um, and the promotional talent that I'll be working with and that we hire for our trade shows. Um, and I also do the marketing aspect. So I am hands-on involved in our blog that we have on our website, um, as well as our social media outlets that we use to communicate with both our clients and our promotional talent. Okay. Um, so like, how did you find Vantage? Did you like uh, apply to them or did they recruit you or how did that happen? Well, it kind of is a funny story actually. Um, the CEO and president of this company is actually good friends um, with my family. So I had been applying for a bunch of different marketing positions um, throughout Rochester and I just happened to stumble up, uh, across this one um, and then found out that I, you know, I knew someone well, I knew someone who knew someone, you know, in this company. So it was all about who you know. Um, so that's actually how I ended up getting this job. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's the, actually the first time I've heard that part. But I was wondering about that as um, I was getting prepared for this interview. Like, how, you know, like my story is I kind of got recruited while I was in college myself. And um, like I have a lot of friends right now that still have not gotten a job since they graduated in 2006 from college. Mm -hmm. So it's like like uh I just really want to see, like, how did that happen? Like, how did you get this great opportunity? Because it seemed like that you you have a very um, high up position in this company, very important job. And um, for everybody that's listening, this is someone you might want to reach out to um, because she actually does the marketing and she works with the models. With the models. Um, can you tell us about Vantage a little bit? Do you know any of its history? Um, I'm on its website right now. and um, But do you know, like... Uh, like a little about the history or anything that for everybody, I, I, I have not prepped her for this. So she may not, may not, you know, be on the queue with that, but <laughs> um, that's fine. Vantage is, I, I think um, about four or five years old. Um, and it kind of just started um, as a side project by our CEO um, and president. Um, and then it turned, you know, it ended up taking off and he really enjoyed it. Um, and it ended up growing from there. Um, and since I've joined, we've hired a number of different people um, and it just continues to grow and we keep looking forward, you know, and moving forward with this. And we all love what we do and we love the promotional talent that we work with as well as the clients. Um, and it's really something that we really enjoy doing. And so we're not that old, but um, we do have a lot of experience as far as hiring promotional talent goes. Okay. Um, one question to stem from that. Um, so you're about four or five years old. Um, so I, around 2007 ish, I guess, uh, when the company probably was started, um, as a side project, but in four or five years, like y'all are y'all all across the country? Like, um, we are, um, we have one home base office in Rochester, New York that we work directly from. Um, but we staff trade shows everywhere from LA and Las Vegas down to New York city, Orlando, Chicago, um, Dallas. We 
reach the entire country um, and as well as parts of Canada. Okay, wow, that's that's pretty impressive. You say y'all y'all have a lot of experience with hiring promotional models. Did did the CEO CEO that started the company did he have like prior experience uh, before he before he started this company or did he, was this something you know he just started on his own? He did um, have prior experience working with a different company. I don't know which one. Um, I'm not familiar, okay. but I, he decided to kind of take it on his own um, and take take a different turn and and created this company off of that. And um, like I said, we we love what we do here and we we have a great time and it's it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Okay. All right. So let's get into more about what you do specifically. Like um, you say, you do the marketing and then you do the um, the actual working with the models. Can you talk talk to us a little bit about what you do with the models? Um, sure, no problem. Basically, what I do as far as the promotional talent goes, um, I interact with them on a daily basis. So I reach out to them each time we have an event in their area. So for example, um, if we were staffing um, the magic show in Las Vegas, I would reach out to our promotional talent in Las Vegas, um, inform them of all of the information for that event. Um, and then I turn around and create a list of available models, send that off to our sales reps, um, and then they kind of take it over from there. Um, however, I do interact via email and phone with all of our promotional talent. Um, I am their go-to person. They call me if they have questions or concerns, um, if they just found out about our company and want to know more about us, or if they have friends that work and, or if they have any interest in a future event, um, I deal directly with all of them as far as emailing and phone calls, phone calls go. Okay. Um, when you say you reach out to your, um, to your models, do you do that? Is there like a mass email that go up, goes out? Um, because I know a lot of different, um, promotional companies, they do that. Like they'll have like a big uh, database of emails that they just send out to whoever's in that area. Is that kind of how you work with your models? Mostly. Yes. Um, there are times when we'll receive, um, a particular, client that that has a model in mind that he would like to work with and then we might reach out individually to her um you know through an email or a phone call but usually it's just kind of a mass email that we send out to our to our everybody okay um and that kind of like uh starts the next question and uh, all right the way you work with your clients like do you like first like reach out to all the the, the models to, to see who's available and then like showcase that to the client so they can pick who they want to work with or is it like you're saying like they just pick them all and they see if they're available it really depends on the client um but i would say probably about 95 percent of the time we reach out to all of our promotional talent so everybody has a fair chance um you know if you're available i'm gonna submit you and that's that's kind of how it works we usually give our models you know a decent amount of time to respond so we're, you know, we're always interested in making sure that every promotional model that wants to work an event gets an equal opportunity to do so. So once we have those emails, um, we then compile them together and then I send them off to my sales reps and they, they show our clients and then our client would then at that point select who they would like to work with. Um, and like I said, about 5% of the time, then we have clients that come to us and say, I want to work with Jane Smith um, from Chicago is she available? And then again, that's when I would turn around and just call her. If by chance she's not available, then we go back and reach out to everybody and see who is available again, giving everyone an opportunity. Okay. Awesome. Because I remember in our last interview that everybody will not get to hear, <laughs> um, that uh, I was asking like in the promotional modeling industry, like there's a, like a, a small percentage of girls that get 90% of the jobs and, clients tend to want to work with only those girls if they can and I was asking you at that time like did you kind of work with a small set of girls mainly and then reach out but like you're saying you you reach out to everyone and try to give everybody a fair opportunity and I think that's awesome I don't think a lot of companies do that because they they really want to work with just a small set of girls so um that's something that anyone that's listening should really like about this company is that they give you a fair opportunity to work Okay, um, so I want to ask a little bit about the industry itself because um, trade shows is kind of like a niche that I have not really particularly got any experience in or have researched a lot. Um, can you talk to us about like 
why do clients go to trade shows? Um, what role the model plays in the trade shows? Like, what's her responsibilities? Like, um, how much knowledge or training she she should have? Um, that sort of stuff. Can you talk to us a little about the industry itself? Sure. Um, so trade shows in general um, are a great way for clients and companies as well as buyers to get to know each other um, and to really interact. So a general trade show, um, typically trade shows are very, I mean, when you think of a trade show, you think of a very large one. Um, but there are trade shows and conventions throughout the country that are smaller but basically, a trade show is a gathering of people within a particular industry, whether they are exhibitors who are trying to promote their product or service, or buyers and attendees who are trying to find people to work with or people to buy products from. Um, and basically, what our promotional talent do at these trade shows is they become part of the team, the company that's going there. So they can do anything from just standing at the booth, you know, talking about the company um, and just kind of talking to attendees and getting people engaged at, in the booth. Or um, it goes as far as, you know, becoming a spokes model for that particular company where they have to memorize script um, and really know what they're talking about and really be able to go into in-depth parts of that company and essentially act like they work at that company. Um, but like I said, it kind of varies. So it's, you know, the regular trade show model that will just stand there handing out promotional fires or um, promotional products to attendees to, again, the more experienced trade show model or spokes model who will stand there and really present and represent the company um, and know much more in detail about the company. Okay. Um, uh, for the, the question I had about the training. So basically what you're saying is um, – probably for just the general trade show responsibilities like it's something they can pick up on the fly when they get there but if they are doing the spokes models uh positions they actually would get a little training ahead of time maybe and they really have to be in tune with that company and know the message that they're trying to to uh give um in behalf of the company is that is that correct yeah that's exactly correct um basically paul when you're a trade show model, um, if you're just the standard trade show model, like you said, you can kind of pick it up as you go. Usually, you don't have to know too much about the company, and it's usually on-site training. So you'll get there, you'll meet um, your representative from that company, and they'll basically explain to you what they're looking for and what they need you to do at the trade show. As far as spokes modeling, that goes into a little bit more detail as far as homework goes for the promotional talent. They usually receive some sort of document from the client um, with either content that is like talking points or content that they need to memorize. And then it's up to them to make sure that they come 100% prepared um, and do their research on that company so that they know exactly what they're talking about to attendees and so that they're ready and willing to work hard. Um, we don't do any sort of training. So we just hire the models and let them promote their services and their talent to to the clients. So it's be, it's up to the model to make sure that she's ready to go for each event. Okay. Um, and uh, I, like uh, I spoke to you before uh, with training, it's really, when it comes down to it, I guess besides the spokes models, because because they're trying to deliver a message, it's really up to the model to be ready and prepared um, to get the training that she needs. Even if you have to volunteer for somebody to learn how to do uh, promotional model work you're your own business it's not like you're an employee and as a business it's your responsibility and i i, it, I found that that's pretty coming across the board there's not a lot of training that goes on now like you're saying for special positions like spokesmodels yeah you're probably going to get a little training because they want you to actually do a great job for them and they because they're i mean their reputation is on the line uh let me ask you a question um what kind of industries are these clients in? Like, do, what do they range from? I, I'm imagining car shows or some because I've seen a lot of those. But are there different kinds of trade shows that the girls will work for? Absolutely. Um, from car shows to dental shows um, to fashion shows, bridal shows. We're pretty much across the board. Um, 
any, I mean, landscaping shows, construction shows, we do it all. And the promotional talent, you know, like you were saying, Paul, needs to be ready. And they do need to do their research um, and their training on their own so that when they go to those trade shows, um, you know, maybe it's good to know a little bit about the dentist, the dentistry field before, you you know, you work at that trade show. Um, and, but we, we do everything across the board. Okay. Um, and that leads me to another question. Like, um, when you are looking for a girl you want to hire, what is it specifically that you're looking for? Are you, are you looking for looks? Are you looking for passion, punctuality, reliability? Like, what are those qualities that you're really looking for when you're trying to hire to present to your clients? And what are they looking for on as general? The qualities that we're looking for in our trade show talent, um, they range, but most specifically, we're looking for charismatic, outgoing, friendly girls, someone that's very easy to talk to, that you feel comfortable around, and that's just, that brings a sort of professionalism and a, a sort of confidence, and our clients are looking for exactly the same. They want, you know, a promotional model that's that's going to be great and go out there and be energetic and outgoing and get herself in the middle of a crowd to help promote their their company. So we're always looking for those girls that are just really charismatic and and excited to work and and passionate about what they're doing. Right. I guess what you're saying is it would do it wouldn't do anyone any good if you had the girl come out there and she was so afraid that she wouldn't talk to anybody or she wouldn't engage with those people or show any passion because she's so afraid like what you're saying is you're looking for even if they are afraid they need to find a way to get out of that shell and to really come alive and show some personality is that is that what you're saying that's what you really need from these girls exactly okay um and i think that's pretty true across the board even if you're just doing a regular promotional job you really need to show some personality that's what really sells you know, if you just talk to them in a very monotone voice and you're trying to get away from it as soon as possible, that's not a great experience for anybody. Um, all right. Um, let me let me ask you just one question before I get to uh, the one I want to get to is the entering interesting stories. Like you said, you, you do trade shows, but what other kind of mo- I think you said you do other kind of promotions and stuff that your company does. What like what are those that you do? We do about probably 75% of trade shows. Um, and then about the 15% are one-off promotions or liquor promotions. We do runway shows, um, print modeling, um, and kind of the other aspects of modeling we dabble into. Our niche really is, you know, the trade show models and the trade show industry, but we do have promotional events for, like I said, liquor promotions, festivals, and, and other one-off promotions. Okay, so you, yeah, you kind of do it all, but you're mainly the trade show. That's that's pretty much the main thing you do. Okay, all right. Well, this is a part of the the part of the of the show. I want to ask you about some real life stories because I think we learn a lot more from personal experiences that that you've had that models have had. Um, do you have any interesting stories that you can share with us about some of the experiences you've had? Um, working with models uh, for clients and stuff, maybe something good, maybe something bad, you know. Um, Can you share with us some of those stories? Absolutely. Um, My favorite story to share to this day um, is with a promotional model um, that contacted me probably about a year ago. And she was very concerned because she just she wasn't getting any work. She replied to all of these events, never heard back, and wasn't really sure what she could do about it. She called me um, a handful of times. She emailed me, and, and we built up a relationship. Um, and she became someone that I knew. I knew her name very frequently, and I could talk about her. And she shared her experiences with me and just continued to call me every once in a while and check in with me and see if there was anything she could do to, you know, start getting booked more. Now, because I started to remember her name and built a relationship with her, when it came time to recommend um, talent to our clients, which we often do to kind of help clients to the next step, I was able to recommend her and promote her services because she had promoted them to me. And, and I knew her and I felt comfortable that she would be reliable and dependable. 
Um, and that being said, she, because of her persistence with me and her interest in, and just getting work and learning how, how to be a better promotional model, she's one of our most booked um, models in Orlando to this day. Um, it's wonderful to hear and she continues to keep in touch with me and always is willing to give me a call every once in a while and send me an email. But it, it just goes to show you that if you do have the passion and you do have you know, the drive that you will make it. Okay, so basically um, with this girl, she kind of showed you her passion, which is what we were talking about a minute ago, um, by she was trying to build a relationship with you, uh, with you, um, which got her, you know, got her on your on your radar, which which led to her getting booked. And now she's one of your best because her passion for what she was wanting to do just comes out and everything she's doing for you. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. And and like I said, she's one of our most booked models now. And it, it just goes to – it's just kind of interesting to see a year later because she had – you know, she was rarely getting booked before. Um, and, and now she, again, is like our go-to talent in Orlando because she just does a wonderful job and we just know that we can rely on her. Okay. Um, I think another message I was wanting to get out with, with this story was um, persistence. Like – a lot of people are afraid to email someone a couple of times because they feel like they're they're being a pest or they're they're really bothering you. And I guess what you're saying is as long as you're, you know, you're not just saying, give me a job, give me a job, give me a job, give me a job. But you're actually trying to build a relationship. You don't mind someone reaching out to you and getting on your radar because that kind of shows you how determined they are um, to uh, work for you and the passion they have for doing the job. Is that kind of what it is? Because I, I, like, I know a lot of people, including myself, I, I, I feel uncomfortable emailing someone a lot because I'm afraid. But I have learned that in people who are in, you know, in the higher positions, they, they have a lot of things going on. You know, they have a lot of things they have to worry about and think about. A lot of emails coming in, and it takes persistence to get their attention. You know, but do it in a way that's respectful and 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 it shows that you just have passion and you're not trying to. You're not begging for, you know, give me a handout or whatever. And that, is that kind of like, because I, I just want people to understand that they can reach out and get on somebody's radar. Exactly. Um, for this example, like you were saying, it wasn't, she wasn't being a pest. She was not frustrating me by any means. She was just making herself known and building that relationship with me in a valuable relationship. Um, it wasn't, you know, just how can I get booked? What can I do? It was her interacting with me and having a conversation um, and here at Vantage, our main goal is really just we want to help our promotional talent just be better and to get to that <coughs> place that they want to be with their modeling. So we're always trying to help and hand out tips and advice that can help them get hired. So I, I actually welcome those emails and I, I, I respect the promotional models that that reach out to me because they are interested and they are passionate about what they're doing. And like I said, that will come back around and really help them in the end. Okay. Um, and I think you, do you have another story? I think, um, we were talking and you had another story that I think you want to share that I really, I want people to hear, hear this because this is very important. Um, it was the one, I think it was the girl that was your top talent. And then, you know, you, you, you can tell the story, but <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, so one of the other things that happens here at Advantage, and I'm sure with other promotional agencies, is there are certain models that just from the get-go just start getting booked all the time. Um, and we had that model, um, and she was wonderful. We booked her all the time. Um, she was one of our go-to models in Chicago, and we were very excited to work with her, and we we're always willing you know, to give her the opportunity to work because she always just – did a great job. Every time clients, you know, were so excited to at the end of the event um, that she was continually booked again and again by by multiple clients, um, and she just did a wonderful job and she was great. Um, and then one one trade show came around um, and we booked her and she was ready and excited to work. And then I think it was like a week before the event or a couple days before the event, and she said that she wasn't feeling well and she was unable to you know make it to the event. Well, come to find out, um, our client still went to the event. We just hired a different promotional model for him. Um, and that girl 
he spotted at the actual trade show. So she was actually working that trade show with a different client. Um, and that client, our client turned around and told us, um, and we immediately, we removed her from our system and it basically just burned all bridges with us because we're here to help and promote your services and, you know, to help promotional talent in their future goals and their career. Um, and, and to do something like that was just, just not okay with us. And so from there on, you know, she, she's been blacklisted by our, our company and unfortunately we will not be working with her again. Okay, <clears throat> what I want to do is to dig a little deeper into this because I really want I want girls to understand the reasons why this was not okay. Because from my own personal experiences, uh, from when I was doing, uh, I had a promotional company here in, where I live, and from those experiences that I've had, and I've had similar experiences like what you just described, um. I, I found that a lot of p girls do not understand what the problem is with that, you know, and I just want them to understand. Um, and, and let me let me start, because if if you are working a lot with, say, Vantage and they are there's a client and these are big accounts. And you got to understand this is these are big accounts that they have. And this client wants you to work um, their work, their event at a trade show. Well, you can't turn down the person who's been giving you work and their client and then turn around and work that same trade show for a different client. You, you see what I'm saying? Like there's there's this conflict of interest. You know, you basically put the, the, the people that's feeding you on the back burner to work with somebody else. And that's just not professional or cool or at the very least, I think that girl should have at least gave you an explanation why instead of lying about it. She should have maybe told you that she had already booked another client at that trade show and maybe y'all could have worked it out or something. Is that kind of like how you feel about it? Um, that that kind of explain how y'all felt about it? Yeah, that's a, that's exactly how we feel. Um, again, like you were saying, Paul, you don't necessarily want to bite the hand that's feeding you. And we were giving her a lot of promotional work and a lot of trade show work. And, and she was she was working probably once every couple of weeks for us um, in Chicago. And and we had a very good relationship. You know, things went smoothly. Things always went great. And then it just turned around. And, and unfortunately for her, she won't be working with us again um, but fortunately for the other promotional talent in Chicago, they now have more opportunities. But again, it's just it's unprofessional to do such a thing. OK. Um, uh, how did let me ask you a question? Did, was the client really upset with you or were they did they how did, you know, like did they feel like it was her or did they feel like it, you had, you know, booked her for somebody else or did they really react really negative or were they just really just disappointed? They, the client was, was pretty disappointed because they had hand selected her. And then because we had such a good relationship with her, we had, you know, a, told this client again and again that she was a great promotional model and that she would do a great job for them. And then unfortunately she turned around and, and did that. So I think that the client was just very disappointed, um, kind of from both aspects right. beca because obviously they wanted to work with that promotional model, but at the same time, it, it made them, con you know, be concerned about our company and whether or not we're reliable. Right. So again, that's why we can't work with her again, because we just, you know, we try to build relationships with our own clients um, as well as building relationships with promotional models. And, and this is a business and we, we do have to, you know, keep moving forward. So unfortunately, like I said, she, she just doesn't work with us anymore. Okay, to to kind of cap that up, like I know from my own personal experiences from the, the girls I was working with, I don't think girls are understanding or realizing that every time that we go to a uh, client and we are we are giving them promises and putting our name on the line, saying you know to, that we're going to be reliable, that they're going to do their be there and they're going to do a good job, and when you do when 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 you've made that dedication to us and then we make that dedication to them and then you back out, we're the ones that get the blame. Ultimately, they're going to look at you, the, the business and say, well, we can't trust you because of this. We know that your word doesn't mean isn't gold that, you know, you can't follow through. And so one one girl can ruin a whole account for a business and it's not worth it. 
So once you just demonstrate that you're not reliable or you're or you've got other interests that's not compatible with with yours, or you're just not going to communicate and be truthful, then I can't trust you to put my name on the line for you, which means now I got to give your job to someone else. It's not personal. It's just I got to protect my name and my brand. And that's kind of what you're what you're doing. You're trying to protect your name and your reputation with your clients because that's ultimately your business. <clears throat> exactly. Okay. Um, well, Margaret. I am going to put some links below this post um, so that anyone who's listening can find uh, the website, your your Facebook um, page, the the Twitter page, and um, how can they reach you? Like, should they just go to the website, which is modelsfortradeshows.com, with the four being the number? Um, should they just like go to the contact page and just send a message? Or should they, is there a personal email that they should send you? Or how can they reach out to you if they're wanting to talk to you about becoming a model for you? Um, if any promotional models are, you know, specifically looking to speak with me, um, there's a number of different ways that you can do that. Um, the first being you can jump on any of our social media sites uh, and, and send us a message and say that you're looking for Margaret um, and I'll be sure to answer. Um, the second being they can email me directly um, at my email address, which is my name, which is Margaret, um, at models, the number four, tradeshows.com. Or um, they can also jump on the website and send an email directly through our website to um, our company, and then I will be connected with them at, at that point. Okay, I will put a summary of all that, um, the contact information uh, where they can quickly find you. Um is there anything else that you have to say um, um, or you want to emphasize or just conclude? Um, I think this has been a really great uh, interview, and I think a lot of people are going to get a lot out of it. And um, I know a, a few people that might be really interested in getting into the trade shows uh, um, industry. The only thing I would say, Paul, is that um, here at Vantage, we, we really are trying you know, to make sure that the promotional talent um, – have ways of accessing us at all times, you know, that they can email us and talk to us. We're always here for them um, and we're always here to educate them as well. So even promotional models that haven't haven't had much experience, they're welcome to learn from us and from what we have to offer because we really do want the better of the promotional models or we want our promotional models just to do better and to kind of move forward in their career. Um, we have our social media is always full of tips and helpful hints as well as our blog, which we update regularly. Um, and, and we're always here just for the betterment of, of our talent. And we just want them to always know that we're here if they need us. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Margaret. I hope everyone had a <clears throat> really good time learning um, about this and um, Margaret, I hope to have you on again soon. And um, thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for listening to the American Wing Girls Modeling Podcast. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address, www.americanwinggirls.com, to your friends and colleagues. Be sure to check out our archive section on our website for previous podcasts. This has been an American Wing Girls production. Join us next time for another edition of the American Wing Girls Podcast.